good afternoon, everybody. Um, back again, and another month has flown by. Um, sitting here in Essex, uh, with all the doors and windows open, sun is streaming down outside. I'm feeling very hot here, but very excited to talk to you about prisoners of war um, in the International Committee of the Red Cross Archive. That's what the ICRC stands for. So let me crack on with that without further ado. So, um, I mean, I, th I should start by saying this is a fantastic record collection. Um, and it was such a boon when it was released online. I forget how long it's been online now, but it's been on online for, for a few years. Um, of course, um, those of us with a military interest knew that the, the archive existed. Um, but it was always a pain to actually get in touch with the archive and get information from them. And then suddenly, lo and behold, they appeared overnight. Um, but anyway, what we'll be looking at is pretty much this this archive in, in its um in its entirety. I will be, of course, mentioning Find My Past uh, as we go through this because we do publish the records on uh, Find My Past as well. Um, and um, but, but I'm really going to look at how to make the best of this uh, archive and, and some of the challenges that, that you'll face when looking through it. So um, the, the URL for it you'll see in a minute on the next slide. Um, but you're faced with, uh, when you go to the, the homepage, you're faced with that screen. Uh, these days, you get the choice to search by name, nationality, or, or status. Uh, originally, you just uh, search by name. But, but what it is, um, in August 1914, on the 21st of August, so they didn't hang around, really. Britain went to war on the 4th of August. And, um, and the, by the 21st of August, the ICRC had established a prisoners of war agency in Geneva. Um, and in due course, belligerent countries supplied the agency with lists of men who'd been captured. And from those lists, the agency then created index cards. And the cards are classed by, are classified by nationality and, and by the status of the person. So it's uh, whether it's uh, civilian or military, um, and then to say by the nationality as well. Um, Although it says uh, prisoners of the First World War, the ICRC archives, it's not just prisoners of war, actually. It's also inquiry lists uh, or, or inquiries about people who went missing. So, for instance, uh, we'll, we'll look at one later on. But uh, if you were to search for uh, Rudyard Kipling's son, John, who, who went missing at the Battle of Lewes in 1915, uh, you'll see several cards there that the ICRC has um, asking for information about John, uh, my boy Jack, as, uh, um, as, as it was known later. So it's, so it's a very um, useful archive because it has prisoners and, and missing as well. There's the, um, there's the URL at the top, uh, but if you were to just Google um, prisoners of war, First World War, ICRC, you'd, you'd get to it easily enough. Um, it has basic, uh, the website has basic functionality, search functionality. Um, Find My Past has partially indexed some of the information, but it's still a work in progress. Um, and, and over the next few slides, I'll take you through um, as I say, the best way to uh, to look at the collection and to explain it in a little more detail. Um, information in ledgers does vary. Um, it, it can provide as much information as you'll find on a card, or, or in some cases, it provides an awful lot of information. And, and again, we'll look at that as we go through this. But there you can see um, this, this info, that photo is taken from the ICRC website. You can see some clerks um, in Geneva looking at some of the index cards that they've created. Um, they're probably matching up with, you know, they've received an inquiry. They're looking to see um, uh, whether there's anything for that person or they've received another list from a, from a camp and they're wishing to add to it. Um, it's worth pointing out as well, I shouldn't skip over this, um, that although my interest is always British Army, and we're talking primarily about British Army today. If you have ancestors who were in the German Army, for instance, who were captured, or, or in the Belgian Army or the French Army, their records are all here. And you just would go back to that original search screen I showed you um, in the last slide, which is on the home page, and type in French nationality or German, or whatever the nationality is. And you then search through another um, load of uh, Indexes, cards, names, uh, the, the filing system on ICRC. So it's a so it's a multinational search facility for men who were captured during the First World War. And there you go. Just some more um, some more stats there. Um, I forget how many cards there are. Millions of, of cards for for men and probably women as well who were captured during the First World War. Charles de Gaulle. He was. Uh, one of the Frenchmen captured, and that's his card there. So, uh, looking at the 
ledgers, and again, I'm re referring specifically to the to the British um, ledgers. You've got three separate series, so you've got you you've got the reference number there, um, and it's designated either PA, P, or R. Uh, PA uh, are prison ledgers bound in volumes. Um, they begin certainly in volumes of 200 pages, but that, um, that doesn't always stick to that that number of pages. And P also is prison ledgers, which also fall into the main group above. So, so P and PA are, are pretty much the same. R, R is repatriation ledgers. So these are ledgers of men who were repatriated, and that could be repatriated at the end of the war back to the UK, or it could be uh, men who were repatriated to Holland uh, or also to Switzerland. And, and that, that also happened. You'll find men who went out to uh, Laysen in Switzerland and Chateau de X. Um, if they had TB, they would, they would often be repatriated to uh, to Switzerland for the for the cleaner air, and, and men were also repatriated or or interned in Holland, as we'll see. So um, I'll start with the case history. This man, um, George, uh, Henry George Boldero, he um, turned up on my front doorstep when I was uh, living at home with my parents, and um, I'd just been in the local newspaper, um, a star of stage and screen even then, and local news, uh, even when I was at the tender age of 18. But but anyway, I'd, I'd, an, an appeal had been in a newspaper um, that I wanted to interview First World War men. Uh, my grandfather had recently died, and I regretted not having spoken to him about the First World War. And uh, so I set about trying to interview people locally where I lived. And um, and this man saw the advert, or saw the, saw the report in the paper, just knocked on the door one day and, and sat down in my parents chair and I photographed him and then listened to his story um so he, and he was a prisoner of war he he was he would have been about 82 83 when this photo was taken it's probably 1981 uh, yeah 1981 i think um that's a quote uh, from his time in the prison camp um he was uh, 27443 Henry George Boldro of the 1st Wiltshire Regiment. Coincidentally I've got Boldros in my family um and I think it probably is a Norfolk name um he was born in Castle Acre, Norfolk, on the 24th of Feb, 1899, uh, conscripted on the 24th of Feb, 17, and captured in April, 1918, um, finally discharged in December, 1919. So he spent, uh, he, he wasn't kept in the camp all that time, but he was certainly in the camp for, for uh, from April, 1918, till the end of, um, en end of the year. And I looked for him on the ICRC website. The only, the only regret I have, of course, is that when he came to see me and when I talked to him, there was no, there was no internet for a start, but there was no, so there would have been no ICRC. There's no, um, the records hadn't been digitized. Uh, metal index cards hadn't, were still with the MOD. Um, there was very little that you could find. Um, you know, you had to know where to look for a start and, and then, and then go there, find the time to go there. I mean, these days it is so much easier. Um, and I, you know, when I find these records for people that I met years ago, I just think, oh gosh, what a shame that I couldn't have actually had that there uh, while they were there talking to me, and we could have gone through it together. Um, but, but I guess you know, it's the same now for the Second World War men, isn't it? You know, those records are still with the MOD, and you know, although we still have some Second World War veterans with us, uh, it won't be long before, unfortunately, there's there's none of them around either. But anyway, looking for. Um, Henry Boldero. So you go to you go to the website ICRC website, um, type in his name Boldero, and then you're presented with this screen. Uh, so this shows you all the names of the men on the left hand side, and he falls within that um, uh, section there, which is highlighted in in red. I don't know if you can see that. If you can see my arrow on the screen there. Um, and so you then would have to click on that and then start scrolling through the images until you find him. There it is. Oh, there's a bigger arrow there. And there are the images that you scroll through. So he has uh, two cards there. One, one is a card which was generated when he was reported missing. And the second card on the right is uh, his prisoner of war card, which gives details of the camps that he was in. So those pages there, if you look at the ones on the right, you've got PA 26742 and 31685. Those are the, um, those are the pages. The, the ledgers that, that appear. But the inquiry form uh, on its own is very detailed. It's from his cousin, um, dated 14th of June 1918. It gives his gives a lot of detail about him, it gives her details for that matter, Miss E. Bloy, um, Queen's Park, London. But it gives his company and the platoon. You don't often find that. Even if you have service records that survive for men, you 
often uh, won't see a company on there and, and, and rarely a platoon. You've got his date of birth, date of capture, um, and you've got movement between, between camps as well. It says there, um, taken 10th of April 1918 at Messines, not wounded, arrived from uh, Halluin to Dolman. Uh, then it gives another reference below the PA31685, which you see on the other side. Um, and then you see again that he's been taken from Dulman to Munster. So that information, they, you know, they, they've received the, the inquiry from uh, Miss E. Bloy. Uh, they've found out what's happened to him. They've written it down on the card and that would have been relayed back to her. Unfortunately, the, the correspondence between them and um, be or between Miss Bloy and, and the um, agency in Geneva doesn't survive. So that reference at the top, A57554, uh, would have been a reference to the correspondence, but it's that no longer survives. It's been destroyed. And then, as I say, the card on the right, uh, which we'll look at in a little more detail now, is, is the PO card, which gives details of the lists provided by the Germans. So there it is again. Um, and you would, uh, having found that image on the ICRC site, you then click on, I haven't illustrated that on here, but there is a, an option to click on a, uh, on a link that provides more information. And when you do that, you then have the option to type in whether it's a PA reference or a P reference or a uh, an R reference that you're looking for. And it says on the card, PA26742. So that's exactly what I've typed in onto the onto the search form. And then you click the search box. And lo and behold, uh, this is what appears. Well, I've obviously cropped the, that information out of the page, but but there's a header for the page. So you've got the important information up there that he's from Dulman. Uh, that he, that rather, he was at, this was generated at Dulman camp uh, on the 14th of June, 1918. Uh, it helps if you know German. I did study German at, school and and it's uh, been useful to um to refresh my memory of, of german but even so there's some and, and interesting isn't it that's all written in gothic gothic script as well um just to make it easy um so but but it basically uh, asks for, for the name of the man um you've got the number you've got the rank um you've got the regiment you've got the company again that's on column four then you've got uh, where he was uh where he was uh, captured, uh, Gefangen and his prisoner, and so, so uh, na name of uh, where, he, where he was captured um, and where he'd come from. And then the final column there is the date of birth and the place of birth and the um, details of next of kin. So you've got a tremendous amount of information there. Um, in his case, you can see you've got Swaffham down as the place of, it's not particularly well uh, printed on his card, but lots of, lots of details there for him. And then similarly on 31685, which was the other reference, this time this is from another camp, from Munster 1, um, 23rd of July 1918. Um, you've got the PA reference at the top, which is effectively the page reference. And then again, all, all that same information. So Wiltshire Regiment, 1st Battalion, A Company, captured at Messines on this date, 10th of April 18, has come to Munster from Dulman. So you can work out um, how long he was at Munster for, um, because on there it had where he come come uh, from before, um, and you know for a fact that he served that he was held at these two camps, and in uh, in 1918 um, a, a woman called uh, Mrs Pope Hennessy um, uh, had a map printed of German camps and a brief summary of uh, of where the camps were and and uh, obviously indicated on the map exactly where, where in Germany they were. It's very useful. It's only uh, I've got it again. It's always all these things are always within arm, arm's reach for me. Um, can I find it? Yeah, I can find it. There you go. Can you see it? Look up in the corner. There you go. Um, it's um, it's been reprinted um, by the Imperial War Museum. I use it a lot actually. I've scanned it and I use it use it an awful lot. You've got very small uh, information, you know, small text about the about the camps, but it's useful information. Um, so I would recommend that. Um, the the collection uh, in itself is not uh, without its challenges. Um, as I say, there's basic indexing of the records by the uh, ICRC. Um, the recorded information in lists and on the cards might be incomplete. So, so you might uh, not always get the regiment. Um, you might get, not get a regiment number. In some cases, you might not get a name. Um, names of individuals might be recorded in, in French or German. Um, so if you're John and, and it happens to be a... A French person who's writing it down, you might be transcribed as Jean, or or you might be uh, Johann if it's German uh, writing it down. So that's very common. And to see Fisher, for instance, uh, F I S H E R spelt as F I S C H E R as a, a German 
spelling. So that's very common to see that. Um, you may also find that uh, information reg regarding regiments has been used using uh, the old regimental designations, so regiment of foot numbers as opposed to, um, and regiment of foot numbers went out in July 1881, but they still persist and, and still persist today for that matter. Um, and, and also, of course, you know, there may be latter day transcription errors. So there's, it, it's an extremely challenging uh, data set. You're starting from a base where the information may not always have been recorded properly. It may have been, in some cases, the soldier may not have given the information uh, properly, it may have deliberately withheld information. Um, but it's up to us as modern day genealogists, detectives, family historians to try and work out in, in some cases um, what the real information is that's there. And, and you can do that to a certain degree, as I shall explain. So um, on the topic of regimental naming, here's some good examples here. So these are, um, you can see the date at the top there is from 6th of January, 1915. So all these men have been captured before this date, obviously. Um, and you can see that the regiments are re recorded in, in different ways. So that's the West Riding Regiment, uh, the top West Riding Infantry Regiment, Norfolk Regiment. Then you've got 18th Royal Irish Rifle, Royal Irish Regiment, 7th Royal Fusiliers, 31st East Surrey, etc. Um, those are not battalions. I mean, later on in the war, there would be, or there, there was a, a, a 7th Royal Fusiliers. There was never a 31st East Surrey for that matter. Um, but these are regimental uh, regiments of foot designations. So before the Royal Irish Regiment became the Royal Irish Regiment in on the 1st of July 1881, it was the 18th Regiment of Foot and the Royal Fusiliers was the 7th Regiment of Foot and the East Surrey was the 31st and it was the 31st and another for that matter. There was there were two regiments of foot that became the East Surrey. But, but this, this is just to point out that you do find this on, on these records that the Regiment of Foot designation is used, used uh, on the records. And it might be it might be shorthand uh, for that matter, uh, just as it was used on metal index cards, which I'll, again, I'll show you in a minute. Um, it, it might have been shorthand for the clerks of the day, but but from people looking at, at it today, um, you might think, well, why is, why is that down there? Or you might think if you were researching Sydney Ooting, who, sh who should probably be Sydney Utting, you might think, oh, there, look, fantastic. You know, he served with the 7th Royal Fusiliers. Not the case. He wouldn't have served with that battalion at that point in time. This is uh, from the same page as well. Um, and you've got the uh, Kigs, uh, corrected to Kings, Kings Scotch Gardens, um, that well-known regiment. And there they are further down, um, a slight variation, um, the 25th King Scotch Guards. And of course, that's not um, the King's Scotch Gardens or the King's Scotch Guards. Uh, the 25th Regiment of Foot was the King's own Scottish Borderers. So that's the easy one. So you, straight away, you can say, okay, Edward Jackson, um, and uh, William uh, or Joseph Adair, King's Own Scottish Borderers. And, uh, and I've checked those men in other lists um, and, and data that I have. And there you go, 8044, Edward Jackson, 2nd Battalion, and Joseph Adair, um, also 2nd Battalion, B Company for him. And there's another example there, uh, James Putlett. Um, that's not a name that I've ever come across, uh, a British surname, and I think it's po probably Butler. Uh, you can imagine, again, the person standing at the table saying, you know, name, regiment, rank, James Butler. Oh, so he puts it down as Putlet. Um, that's that's at least how I think that's been recorded. Um, another well-known uh, regiment, or lesser-known regiment, I should say, really, the Conkstown Regiment. Uh, this is 2nd Lieutenant J.A. Bevan. So lots of information here. Um, he's recorded as Janus Bevan, uh, captured at Armentiers on the 20th of October 1914. Returned to Krefeld, which was a camp for officers, prisoner of war camp from uh, Reserve Lazarette One, as hospital, uh, on the 16th of November 1914, and that's date stamped um, 25th of November 1914. But the regiment is given as the Conkstown Regiment. Um, of course, no such thing. It's bonkers, isn't it? Um, it's actually the King's Own Royal Lancaster Regiment. That's his medal index card. Um, taken from the National Archives. So you can see there, 1st Battalion, King's Own, Royal Lancaster. So they've taken King's Own to be Conkstown. That's how that's come about. And he's a lieutenant there. Um, 
interesting as well to look at this card where you can see in the remarks column, POW, um, exonerated officer list. Um, officers, if they were captured, had to justify why they were captured and why they didn't make a fight of it and jolly well send the Germans running. And he obviously did that. Um, but it's interesting that the officers did have to um, prove that uh, that they were captured for a reason and, and couldn't have done anything about it. Now, you've also got on there information about his clasp. Um, the issue of the medals, the clasp and roses is the clasp and roses that were awarded uh, later to men who were uh, serving overseas uh, before um, 22nd of November 1914. And those men had the uh, clasp for the old contemptibles. They were known as the old contemptibles. And you can see he arrived there on the 10th of September 1914. So he's James Archibald Bevan of the King's Own Royal Lancaster, not Janus Bevan of the Conkstown Regiment. Um, here's another one as well to look at, um, another old contemptible, um, Charles O'Dell. His regimental number is uh, 36676, and that indicates that he'd originally joined the 3rd Special Reserve Battalion of the Bedfordshire Regiment. Um, the Bedfordshire Regiment had been in France since 16th of August, and so Charles must have been sent out as part of a draft because his date of arrival is the 19th of September 14. So the beds have been out there for a month before he joined. Um, his card uh, so gives his number, uh, gives his prisoner of war status. And you'll see on, on most cards um, for men who were captured in 1914 that the POW appears on the card. It, it generally doesn't appear on medal index cards for men who were captured after 1914. But 1914 POWs, you'll gener generally find that on there. Um, and again, you've got on the top here, uh, 19th, uh, 19th September 1914 is his arrival date. And then um, uh, class and roses for him, medal references. And in the top left, that 16, um, that again is a reference to the 16th Regiment of Foot, um, which was used as a, as a filing reference for the clerks of the day. And it's, uh, it's worth reminding uh, uh, yourself that you know, this is a reference that had gone out of currency really from 1881 when when those regiment of regiments of foot had been consigned to history so you might think and and had been replaced by uh, territorial named territorial territorially named regiments so the bedfordshire regiment in this case um but you know the, those regimental numbers were still used um and were, were used by british clerks and also by people in the camps in germany So here's uh, Charles O'Dell's index card and, and, and an entry from uh, the ledger 468. You can see there four, four references for him, PA 468, 3835 and 4671. So again, you go through the same process, find, look for his name, find the right card, and then click on the links. Um, he's down at the bottom. Uh, Charles O'Dell, again, 16th Infantry. So again, not, not the regiment, not the Bedfordshire Regiment, the 16th Infantry. So you'd have to then translate that and it's the same there on all of these you, you've got the 10th infantry there um you've got the first uh, scots guards you've uh, more scots guards 29th is worcestershire you've got the scots guards again and then the 16th so these are all regiments but you've got some great information you've got the the, na the surname the first name uh, the rank um where he was uh captured um this is, this is this column here. And then, so he was captured on the 11th of November at Ypres and where he'd come to, so he'd, or where, where he was held. And that's uh, Salzfedel is, is the name of the place there. This is the next reference, uh, 3835. So he, he was from Salzfedel. He went to uh, Meersburg on the 10th of October, 1915. And it's all written there underneath there, actually, there on um, 10th of October 1915 from the um, uh, prisoner of war camp, Salzfedel, uh, returned um, uh, English prisoner. And this is the final one, final page for him. Again, uh, you've got, it doesn't give you an awful lot more information, but, but uh, it's important that you've got here that he was at Witt Wittenberg. So he's come from Meersburg to Wittenberg on the 8th of April, 1916. That's the date stamp anyway. Um, but again, you've still got this um, second from bottom. You've still got him recorded as the 16th Infantry Regiment. And you find that a lot in the records. So definitely worth um, looking for that. Um, 
and then you've got uh, you'll find out easily enough if you just Google twenty eighth foot, for instance. Uh, on you'll find straight away which which regiment that would would be. So there's lots you can do to follow up on on Charles O'Dell. Even you got some great information there, but you could work out when he joined the Third Bedfordshire Regiment by uh, looking to see when that number would have been issued. Um, late 1910 or early 1911 is my guess. I've not gone into it in detail. You can download the medal roll entries. Um, <clears throat> they are available online. You can uh, download the 1st Bedfordshire Regiment War Diary from the TNA as well. Uh, so check the entry for the 11th of November. Um, I, I checked it, actually. I've, another another uh, source for First World War, prisoners of war, is Ray Westlake's uh, British Battalions in France and Belgium. <clears throat> which is a summary of, of, of all the war diaries for the infantry anyway. Um, and you'll get that um, easy enough online, find it at Amazon. The, the war diary is uh, fairly sparse for this particular battalion. It says about five killed and 17 wounded, but there's no mention of POWs. Um, but he does appear in a casualty list. Um, I didn't find him on the BNA, but he does appear in the Times newspaper, which you can access if you've got a library account um, with the county library if you're, you're based in England. Um, or in the UK, and you have a library account, you can access that uh, archive by using your county ticket, um, and then you can access the Times newspaper collection. And here he is. He's in that Prisoners of Germany um, section. I'll just go back. If you look, uh, where is he then? Bedfordshire Regiment. Yeah, there, there he is there. Um, two, two men listed, uh, J. Glenn and uh, C. Odell. And you can see them there. Um, a quick plug for my blog. Um, I was trying to sneak it in somewhere, but but I do publish a lot of lists of um, prisoners of war from 1914. I, I'm particularly interested in, in the men of 1914, actually. Um, and so it's a, it's a useful check. You can check against the names in the ICRC to check if the person appears in any of the lists that, that I publish. Um, so uh, that's the website for that. Um, and here's another case study just to show you some repatriation records. So this man is Ernest Barrow, uh, Corporal Ernest Barrow. Date of capture there at the top. Uh, so he wasn't in France very long before he was captured. That's the second day of fighting. Um, Mons was the 23rd of April 1914, and he was captured on the 24th. As many men were, for that matter. I mean, if you look at the number of men captured in the, in that first year, 1914, it's a tremendous loss um, of men. And, and these are all career soldiers who the BEF could ill afford to lose. Um, his rank and number there, Corporal 9256. Cheshire Regiment, so 22nd Cheshires, that's not 22nd Battalion, that's the 22nd Regiment of Foot, again. Um, he's C Company. And then you've got the page references there. So there's uh, four PA references and two R references. And I'm going to look at the R references now. Those R references there. So the first one uh, there, you can see he was held at, uh, well, I've just filled in some information then looking at, at the prison of war ledgers. He had been held at Munster, Soltau, Baden, Ethelsa and Hamon before being repatriated to Holland in December 1917. Um, and you can see he is there at the bottom, 1956 there. All those men were captured on the 24th of August and all arrived in Holland on the 29th of December 1917. And then you've got that uh, final uh, repatriation document as well, uh, which tells you at the top, nice and clearly, a list of British prisoners of war arrived in England from Germany, 18th of November, 1918, on SS Willochra, notified by embarkation officer. And you've got all the men, all the men's details printed below. So as I said, you'll find these records on Find My Past as well. We've, in, we've indexed quite a few of them. There's, there's still a work in progress and there's still cleanup required, but, they, but the names are on there. Um, so so have a look. Just go to Prisoners of War Collection and type in the person's name and you will find uh, these records amongst other records we have as well. We've got plenty of other records as well of Prisoners of War, thanks to our partnership again with our good friends at the National Archives. Um, we've got thousands of uh, Prisoners of War records, not just from the First World War, but from uh, going way back to the Napoleonic era, right up to the Second World War. So, so lots of records there. Hugely important collection. Um, 
and we're doing our best to clean up. Um, this is uh, when I was looking to put these slides together, I came across some other slides that I presented to people in the company years ago, I think in 2016. And I was using an example then of um, some of the transcriptions that had come through. This isn't in all cases bad transcription on our part. It's how it was transcribed. As I say, it's a challenging, challenging um, data set because often the information was not recorded uh, properly at the time of at the time the information was being relayed. So all these regiments uh, can can be cleaned up and have been cleaned up. In fact, um, you've got names over here. Those no, there's no way those names are are the British names there. Uh, they've just they're just poorly poorly um, captured names. And again, there's an example of a, a Frederick who's become a Frederick. And so that's how we, we would clean um, to make it easier for, for people to find. So um, search tips. Uh, if you found your man on in the ICRC records, um, check back through previous pages to see if these give any additional information uh, over and above what's on the page uh, where your person is, uh, because you might find that his name appears in, in in the middle of a longer list, and there might not be a lot of information on that particular image. But so go back, go back to the start, and you might find that there's information there about the camp, about the date, um, about the manner in which it was recorded. Uh, you find sometimes at the beginning of these books that it will say page such and such is a certain camp and, and page such and such is uh, prisoners of war who've died. Um, so so you do find uh, detail um, and you can cross check against other um, POW record collections to verify names. As, as I said earlier, you could check against some of the collections we have. Uh, you could check in newspaper lists. Uh, you could check against the the names on on my Army Service Numbers blog. Um, it's not complete, but there are. But it's and it's only for 1914. But you, but it's another useful checking point. Um, and that's really you, you have to do that unless you're lucky, of course, and you you get the name and the number and it matches perfectly. But but be wary. I mean, I suppose I suppose the message is don't give up. If you if you go to the site and you're looking for somebody. Uh, who you know is a prisoner, or you have an idea he was a prisoner, and you can't find him. It may may be that you can't find him because the name has been rendered poorly originally, and and doesn't really bear much resemblance to what his actual name or regiment or number was. Uh, so so just just look look quite uh, carefully. Don't don't give up. The photo there is from a um, a camp at uh, Dulman uh, Camp Theatre. Um, uh, certainly was. By the looks of things, um, the, the prisoners of war loved dressing up. Um, you see this all the time. Uh, I think every camp had a theatre, and um, you see the prisoners dressing up as uh, men and women. And well, it seems like uh, almost like oh, what a lovely war, isn't it? But but they're they're great. They're great photos. So recommended reading. Um, the one on the left is I would say is invaluable. Sarah Paterson, Imperial War Museum. It's been out for a few years now. Um, it's very useful because it contains details of camps and lazarettes, um, and it really is essential reading. It's probably the best guide, I would say, for for prisoners of war. Um, in the middle, I, I I'm fond of this book. It's only a slender volume um, by B. G. O'Rourke, who was captured as an officer, captured, I think, on the 26th or 27th of August, 1914. But it's very detailed. It's very, uh, it, it's very much of the sportingness sporting mentality uh, play up and play the game of, of warfare in, in 1914 british prisoners agree not to do certain things and not they agree not to escape um, and you see this all recorded it's also full of names of men as well uh, but officers not not other ranks so it's a good it's a good read um and then the kaiser's first pow's is a more recent book um which has useful photos in inside and um and some good text as well for that matter. So I'd recommend those. So that's it for me. Uh, thanks for tuning in and uh, good luck with your research. And I look forward to catching up with those of you who are going to be tuning in in a month's time. Bye for now.